We have a 30-year loan of $1,000 at 8%. Verify the monthly payment of $7.34. Now, how does a loan work? We're going to have our balance. At the end of each month, we apply interest, and then we subtract off our payment. Now, that's going to be the complicated way to figure out your payment. So what we want to do instead is just separate into two cash streams. For the first cash stream, we assume we're going to invest $1,000 at 8%, and then just let it ride for 30 years. So we don't do anything except apply interest. For the second cash stream, we're going to take our payments, invest them every month, and then let them accumulate interest at 8% for 30 years. So we'll be putting a payment in every month. Then at the end of 30 years, we just set the value of both of those cash streams equal to each other. So whatever accumulates at the end of 30 years should be equal. Then when you set those equal to each other, you're able to solve for the payment. Now, what interest do we charge? So our 8%, we're gonna assume is a nominal annual rate. So if we're making payments every month, we're gonna assume that we're compounding monthly. So we're gonna have 12 compounding periods in a year. So we take our 8%, we divide by 12. So I have 0.08 divided by 12, gives me 0 0.006 repeating. So that's gonna be the thing we multiply by to get interest. Now, for my first cash stream, we put our $1,000 in at t equals zero. Then for 30 years, that's gonna be 360 periods. So we're gonna have 30 years, and we'll have 12 periods in a year. So if we multiply, we get 360. When we evaluate, so you put this in your calculator, out comes $10,935.73. So that's how much $10,000 is worth after 30 years at that rate. Now, for the payments, our second cash stream, what's happening here? So the first thing you do is draw yourself a timeline. Okay, that's gonna be the best way to keep track of what's happening here. Now, at t equals zero, we haven't made any payments yet, so there's nothing going on at t equals zero so far. t equals one, okay, our first month, we're gonna have one payment made. And then I'm gonna make a payment okay, every month after until I get to time t equals 360. Now note, how many payments should I have made? 360 payments. So you'll note the t is gonna tell you what number payment you're on. So here we have the first payment, second payment, then we're going all the way out to payment number 360. Now, we have to figure out how much each of those payments is gonna be worth at 30 years. Now, for the last payment, okay, that's just gonna be worth, okay, P. Here, we're not gonna apply any interest since that's the very last payment that you make. For the next to last payment, okay, that's gonna be T equals 359, that's gonna hit interest exactly once. It's only gonna go through one month until we get to the end. Then you'll note, we're just gonna work backwards. So it'll be zero, one, two, three. That's gonna tell you the number of times each payment's being compounded. So for our very first payment, that's gonna compound 359 times. Now you need to be careful there, it's 359, not 360. That's gonna be because we have 360 payments, but you'll note when we count backwards, we're gonna start with a zero. So that means if I want 360 items here, if I start with a zero, I gotta take one off the very last one. Now, what's that gonna be worth altogether at t equals 360? We take our payment, how many times we compound, that's gonna be the exponent over, okay, our interest factor. 1.006 repeating, raised to the 359. This one's gonna be worth, okay, p times 1.006 repeating to the 358. This one's gonna be worth p times 1.006 repeating, raised to the first power, and that's just gonna be equal to p with no interest accumulated at all on it. So, we're gonna take this term, set it equal to this term. 
Now, if we want to solve this equation, I'm first going to need a formula for a geometric sum. So the idea is going to be, if I take any number not equal to 1, take 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up through x to the nth power, formula says that's equal to x to the n plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, the way we see this, just call your sum on the left-hand side, capital S. You multiply capital S times x. So it's just going to raise the exponent of each x by 1. So 1 will go to x. x will go to x squared. x to the n minus 1 goes to x to the n. x to the n goes to x to the n plus 1. If we take the difference, okay, we'll take x times s minus s. All the middle terms are going to cancel out, leaving me with x to the n plus 1 minus 1. Then on the left-hand side, I can factor out an x minus 1 and then divide. And then that gets us to the formula. Now, in the equation we're trying to solve, on the left-hand side we can factor out a p, and then we're going to have an expression that looks like our term here. So what we're going to get is we'll have p times this sum here. We'll have x is equal to 1.006 repeating. n is going to be equal to 359. So the formula says the sum here is going to be equal to 1.006 repeating to the n plus 1. So 360 minus 1 over 1.006 repeating minus 1. You push that through a calculator, out comes 1490.36. So we're going to have this number times p is equal to our 10,935.73. If I divide through, we'll get our p equal to $7.34.